If you ever wanted to get better at chess, you probably wondered, what is the best opening that I can use as a low rated player that's gonna help me reach my goals in a relatively short period of time? All right, from now on, I want you to see openings as tools. Imagine, if you need to clean up the snow, you need a shovel. To silent your partner, you need a hammer. What I'm trying to get with this is that if you find yourself below 1500, there is one opening that is gonna let you absolutely demolish every single one of your opponents. I swear, I have never seen something even remotely close to this. Give me 10 minutes of your time and I promise you will never look back. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to the Scotch Gambit. Enjoy. This is gonna open up with uh, E4. If you're watching this video, probably yours favorite. And all right, opponent going for it. The most common move. Gonna start with the knight. And usually I would be expecting you to face uh, knight to c6 the most. Okay, simply defending the pawn. Now, this is pretty much the first big crossroads where uh, you can do anything, more or less. Uh, like, let's say, bishop to b5, Rui Lopez, bishop c4 Italian. Knight to c3 for knight, you can play king to bone cloud. Just kidding, please don't do that. Or you can go for something a little bit more aggressive, which is gonna be the topic of uh, today's video. Okay, normally I would be expecting black to take with a pawn. And the most common move by like a large margin is to simply recapture. You probably guessed it right the so-called uh, scotch game but it's even better when you gambit it what i'm trying to say is basically we're gonna be playing the scotch gambit bishop to c4 and all right we get to face the check which i think in terms of popularity it's maybe like uh the third maybe fourth most common move i would generally be expecting them to play either knight f6 bishop to c5 or yeah maybe even a little bit of d6 and then the check as well so it's actually interesting that uh, we get to face something like this and uh, okay maybe you can try to already pause the video and try to think how would you deal with this because uh, against the check you have many options block with a bishop block with a knight or my favorite Keep up the tempo. You don't want to lose the momentum. All right. And a lot of the times they just take and they go back to C5. So curious whether we are going to get something like that. I think taking with the knight is not uh, terrible at all. But I'm just going to keep it this way. I think uh, a better move is uh, bishop to A5 unless I'm missing something. But yeah, he plays bishop to e7. Okay, your turn to pause the video again. If you didn't the first time, make sure to do it now because it is time to get some action. All right, why to play and win? Instantly, move seven. How crazy is this? That, <laughs> you know, we effortlessly get this position, queen to defend. How is he gonna defend? There is just no way for him to defend. It is so bad. Okay, I know you may be wondering, oh, cannot you just defend it with a knight and then get castled and black is okay? Well, think again. Because white has a very nice move to get rid of that. So there is this thing that's looming. And on knight to h6. You gotta open up your eyes and spot that there is bishop takes. And, uh, you know, it's pretty much just killing opponent on the spot. He tries d6. Now, this already puts us in a mating situation. So, we're gonna take with a queen. And then you have, uh, you have a choice. <laughs> I mean, actually no choice. You just go for the simplest move, which is mate in one. You already know by this point probably that uh, when you see mate in one, look for better. However, here we're gonna break the meta a little. 
And we play bishop to e6. Okay. Wow. How nice. How the heck did this even happen, you may be wondering. So, first of all, you want to remember how this begins. Yeah, I'm just going to go uh, quickly through it. Everything very forcing. And then he goes for the check. Now, I played the move c3 and then took with a pawn. Just to kind of keep up the momentum. And yeah, I think he's supposed to play bishop to a5 in, uh, in this position. And we just castle. And I think uh, white is getting pretty nice compensation. One of uh, the main reasons being that uh, on knight f6 uh, moves like e5 just looks very unpleasant for my opponent. He simply does not have a safe square for the knight. Just imagine he plays something like knight there. You go bishop out. He does not have many moves to block but knight e7. And then, you know, you can pretty much at least play something like h3 and force him get this very awful pawn structure, you know, by going bishop takes. But anyways... You can do a lot of things to be better. So, yeah, bishop a5 could be fine. However, his position is very difficult to play. Like, ideally, you just want to, you know, kind of get castled. So these and knight e7, any knight move would be very tempting. However, even the knight e7 move can be losing uh, on the spot after knight g5. And if they castle, okay, try to pause the video and find it uh, yourself. Because white has a very common motif with queen h5. That just ends the game. No kind of play against that. Just uh, creating a million threats. <laughs> if he was to play bishop to c5, you may be tempted to think, oh, that is pretty simple. We are just doing the same thing. We play queen d5, right? Double attack, win a piece, no? Actually not, because he has queen e7. Defending both. Therefore... You want to improve your move order a little. And with a little, I mean a lot. By playing bishop takes on f7. Boom. A very typical trick for uh, this variation. I mean, go to your local chess club and ask any five-year-old. He will probably do this instantly. Because this is really a very common trick that you learn as uh, you're just uh, starting chess. Hopefully. <laughs> At least. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, following position, just pick up the bishop, and uh, white is going to be, like, slightly better just because the enemy king is, uh, you know, kind of struggling to find peace. Uh, the king is now living with some very annoying neighbors, pretty much. You can think of it that way. So, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all that there was about this game. Notice how effortlessly you can checkmate somebody in nine moves, that is 1,000 in blitz. That is, like, the equivalent of uh, 1,400, so... I just find uh, this thing to be pretty mind-blowing. And I've seen like a lot of things, all right? I've been in this game for a lot of years. So this is something definitely special. So with that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. All right, everybody. Finally managed to find uh, another white game. An opponent also plays e5. Meaning that uh, we're going to be attempting our new little weapon by playing d4 and not recapturing because we're not trying to play the normal scotch game but instead we're in for the for for a wild ride you know we're in for the scotch gambit instead and so far we faced uh, the move bishop to b4 check we also faced knight f6 and we see knight to f6 again and important that i recommend you castle here instead of the other somewhat interesting alternative which is e5 so yeah this is just my favorite move and opponent now has a choice between taking and bishop to c5 usually he can also play d6 which is more like uh, you know sort of a slower approach less theoretical d6 is the kind of move that just uh, gives white a nice uh, little edge after knight e4 nothing complicated just uh free uh, space advantage for white but we get bishop to c5 and already the position becomes way more interesting compared to the previous move where you have the chance to play e5 now when you're already castled this is way stronger okay so you want to remember that uh we start with e5 and okay let's see he can already go uh, wrong in like a lot of ways. Like for instance, I think 94 is just 
losing immediately. He can just resign if he plays knight e4. Uh, also, the move d5 is, uh, yeah, I think potentially still very dangerous for my opponent in these complications. I think white even can grab uh, a small edge objectively. And knight to g4. Okay. On knight to g4. We have uh, we have a bunch of moves. I'm just gonna go for this since I know I already know it's good. It's just a question of which is the best. So we're gonna play this just because I wanna show you a very nice little uh, tactic uh, tactical sequence, which is very common for the variation, like incredibly common. You should always uh, look for such things, whether it's like a, either a knight on g4 or a bishop sacrificing on f7 and then you bang him on g5. It's, you know, like opponent is walking on the beach and all of a sudden uh, he gets uh, hit in the head by a coconut. This is the kind of bishop takes on f7 move and now he needs to kind of chill down for a little, sit down and sort of... Uh, <laughs> recover uh, from the impact because okay he, he cannot castle okay that's not a thing when the king moves he can never castle pretty much he's just uh, gonna have uh, a decisive uh, impact uh, on his game just like my videos do on your chess anyways uh, make sure not to lose the queen and you should be good to go I think for that little idea, we're going to block. A lot of people would have uh, probably moved the queen. But uh, yeah, just remember that blocking is uh, also an option. Plus, you may have knight f7 in some positions. Uh, I mean, imagine you get something like this. That would be a hilarious checkmate. Uh, and okay, I mean... You want to be careful with uh, going super deep with knight f7, but honestly, on like how good the position looks, that may be a thing. But actually, if you pay attention to this move, it changes the position dramatically and in our favor too. So please feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning blow because this is creating a huge weakness and compared to like the previous position queen h5 was not such a big problem because he has defensive move g6 and the queen has to just go back and there is no like way to immediately take advantage of this however notice that with h6 he is pretty much shooting himself in the foot because after the check he can no longer play g6, the pawn does no longer support this push. And no matter like uh, where he goes with the king, he's gonna be getting brutalized. Like this. <laughs> you already know that uh, we are about to get some action once queen to h5 is getting played. So get a checkmate, finish the game. And okay, I'm just curious. I want to like very quickly check with the chess.com engine. Quick pause before we continue. I just wanted to let you know that I made the Leecher study, which is completely free. You don't even need to have an account in order to use it. And the study pretty much contains all the traps and theory that has been used uh, during this video. In case you're interested, I'll show you how to access this at the end of the video. Now, back to the analysis because yeah i knew this is fine yeah, apparently c3 is best and i think the line goes takes we take i'm just curious if i can recall my analysis so i know i checked the position like this this is just better because h3 knight h6 we take it's close to like a plus two according to my analysis if I'm like uh, recalling this correctly. So I knew C3 is objectively a little bit better in that position. But but hey, I mean, maybe in the future, if we get this against higher rated players, we're gonna go C3. But for now, I think it is vital, uh, you know, for your starter kit in the Scotch Gambit, that you are always 
looking for such things. Bishop takes, get a check, win back the piece and uh, opponent lost the right uh, to castle. You can pretty much uh, just exploit him with a key idea that whenever he is losing the right to castle, you want to be keeping the queens on the board, okay? It's, it's very important that you have a good feel for the position. Because you're not having like sort of a long-term advantage here. Uh, let's say going into the end game or stuff like that. Really, our edge is in um, dynamic play, in king safety. So keep queens on the board. Very important to play on your strong aspects. Like you get rid of the queens, you know, it's just like a bodybuilder that, uh, you know, aged and lost all the muscles. That is what it feels like uh, if opponent manages to trade, because then his king is going to be safe. Before we continue, I just wanted to clarify that uh, a bit earlier I mentioned uh, 94 is just leading to a completely winning position for white. So the point is, the knight, even though it just looks to be kind of very active for the time being placed in the middle of the board, it is in fact really vulnerable. And you can exploit it with a move such as queen to e2. Okay, you're playing queen to e2. And the main point is that the knight simply is lacking support. What do you mean? It's lacking support. He can just play d5 and defend, no? Well, yes. But you have a little bit of a premium move now. Because you can play on poisson. Take on d6, right. And then kind of like no matter what he plays, he's going to be in a bad position. He is pinned. Moves such as knight b2, d2 are being flattened. And in case he plays f5, keeping the knight, perhaps you're not going to be winning the piece, but you're still doing way better because the king is never going to be able to castle as the bishop is uh, controlling this square. So king is trapped in the middle. You're going to be winning a pawn. You're opening him up. We're pretty much operating him on open body. And white is just uh, crashing. So, yeah, with that, uh, with that in mind, I think we can just move on to the following game. All right, everybody, managed to get a game. Let's open up with e4. And, uh, all right, opponent playing uh, kind of what we want to see and defends the pawn with the knight. Going to go d4. You already know it uh, by now. Just uh, heading towards the scorch gambit. To be honest, I'm going to be revealing a small secret. Maybe in the future on the channel, we're going to be seeing a move like bishop to b5. Which I am pretty sure none of you have ever seen. Um, it is very rare, but kind of interesting gambit. So uh, maybe we're going to get to see that. You let me know in the comments. For now, just going to stick with uh, our main guns, which is a very underrated opening. Okay, for those of you that are not aware, this is still played quite frequently at the highest level, so definitely not a bad thing. And okay, opponent just playing h6. It just turns out that the h6 move, it is so common for this uh, rating range. And this is actually very good for us because uh, it is a mistake. h6, it's pretty much defending against something that was not a threat. While uh, there are other things that uh, opponent could have focused on being in the opening phase, you know, such as developing pieces, therefore moves such as uh, knight f6 or bishop c5 uh, were required. If you still don't get it, a move like uh, h6 is pretty much uh, opponent is over obsessing uh, to have clean shoes while he is getting ready to take a picture for his passport. You get what I'm going with this. So, how do we punish? You really want to remember the C3 move. Okay, C3. Honestly, you can even do it now. I'm just going to wait a little and I'm going to play castle. But the main idea to keep in mind is C3. I want to wait for that bishop to land on C5, which is going to make our C3 move work even better. In case of knight f6, uh, I think... E5 just looks terrifying for my opponent. But we do get to see bishop to c5, so I'm gonna play c3. 
And generally, you're going to be seeing uh, they just capture because we are just having a huge positional threat of playing a move such as CD4, getting uh, a very strong pawn center. All right. This is a very important position. So please feel free to pause the video and try to find the best continuation on your own. If you're thinking uh, queen d5 is the best move, I'm going to reward you the imaginary wooden spoon, just because I don't actually have the wooden spoon nearby. Uh, so that is not the best move because opponent simply defends both uh, with queen to e7. Uh, however, there's a better move. Bishop captures. You do bishop captures and then uh, you get to check. And this way you're just making sure... Uh, you know, the bishop uh, will not uh, run away. Do that. He's going to move the king uh, somewhere. We're going to recapture the piece. And don't think about it as, uh, all right, we did all this kind of uh, fancy schmancy stuff. And now we're just winning material. It is not really like that. The material is still even. But you're winning uh, something that, you know, could be even a little bit more meaningful such as king safety. All right, opponent's king is uh, pretty much just ruined for the rest of the game. If you look at it, the king looks just fine, but deep inside, the king is very sad, okay? It is, you know, you always wonder, uh, you know, what is the king doing, not how is the king feeling? But jokes aside, this position wouldn't be that terrible if he could castle, but because he already moved the king, it is not going to be able to, so uh, he is just stuck in the middle forever. Okay, now... Huh? Opponent just resigned? What? I mean... There was queen things on g7 incoming, but that is like not enough of a reason to resign within this rating range. I don't get it. Okay, I guess we just play this opening and then they, they resign in 10 moves. <laughs> uh, well, I was still like gonna talk you through maybe how is this position and whether there's any kind of play to be worried about. Funny thing, bishop h3 is not a move because you can just take it with a queen. So if you were thinking this is somewhat scary, Dude, just take the bishop, so. <laughs> we could have done that, extra two pawns, and probably opponent was just kind of pissed with the way this game was going, and uh, he was like, screw this, I'm out. So, okay. There's a very simple, uh, small demonstration of this, and uh, with that being said, I think we can move on to the following games where you're actually going to get to see even more typical mistakes that people make within this rating range. All right, everybody managed to find another white game facing an opponent that is uh, borderline 1000. He is very close. Going to begin with the knight and then uh, setting up our beloved Scotch Gambit by now. Going to get a bishop. And let's see. Which line is he going to choose? Okay. We get the more main line kind of thing. That is interesting. All right. How are we going to do this? So there's definitely like the forcing continuation with knight to g5 and uh, knight h6, knight f7, which you can play. We can also just uh, do castle, uh, knight f6, and then e5 type of stuff and try to pretty much just transpose. So let's do the uh, castles this time. And then knight f6, we play uh, e5. I think d5 could potentially be quite problematic for my opponent. After EF, uh, DC, FG7, Rook E1, um, I think uh, white is going to be slightly better in those variations. And, okay, Knight to G4. I'm just trying to uh, recall what the theory is here. Because there's like a very tempting move that uh, you can definitely play. However, I know for a fact c3 is also good. And then dc3, you play bishop takes on f7. And you just go for uh, a somewhat better endgame 
So, I know you guys would probably love to see this check happening. And I already played it once. So, let's do c3 this time. And dc3, bishop f7. Knight e5, I think, is losing by force. Just uh, after a simple uh, sequence, uh, we were to trade and then pin, obviously, followed by cd and uh, win the piece. I'll show you that after the game if anything is unclear. And on dc3, yeah, the point is we don't want to just recapture, but you want to do bishop takes. So forcing him to take, and then we got uh, queen d5, and then we pick up the bishop. And in this whole time, the king is going to be like pretty misplaced. So, all right, let's see. King to e8. Just going to pick up the bishop. Threatening this move in case of takes, just going to take. Cannot really do much besides that. And uh, by the way, king to e8 is not the best move. Like he's supposed to play, uh, I believe, king to f8. And after takes, queen e7, and we are supposed to trade. And white is better in those end games because there's going to be h3 incoming, and he doesn't have a better move than knight h6, which allows bishop captures, and then he gets this kind of like ugly uh, double pawns. But after king eight, and uh, dude, he's playing d6. He's just doing uh, something super anti-positional, anti-strategical, uh, anti how to find a girlfriend. It is anti anything because he's got king in, king in the middle and he's opening up the position. It is the opposite. Okay, you got king in the middle. You should try to keep the position closed. Somebody <laughs> call this man and tell him the news. All right. I think he probably got it the other way around. Uh, okay. Fine. They have this position. Now, a lot of tempting moves. Which one do you consider first? Taking his queen, right? Of course not. You want to look for checks. So rookie one, I think it's uh, really something to be prioritized. I also quickly glance over queen h5 thinking, oh, maybe we can win knight. But then you realize the knight is defended. So that's also not very interesting. And then you can think of this type of moves. But to be honest, it just feels like, you know, throwing in this check. There's no way something like this is going to hurt. And maybe he may even blunder. So please feel free. Otherwise would be weird if you don't feel free <laughs> unless you're watching me from the prison nothing wrong with that uh you go ahead try to pause the video and find the winning move for white because this is a huge mistake i think because it just allows a very simple concept notice that uh, okay queen covers bishop in order to enter you want to get rid of the queen so you can take that bishop it's like you're pretty much trying to break into a, into a house you just gotta distract the dog first and then you got an easy way in. All right? Life-changing life lessons. I know. We're going to pick up uh, that bishop. And then we just retreat like a coward. But we are a coward with an extra piece. So always better to be coward with extra piece than coward with uh, equal material. Or even worse. So, uh, yeah, just... Nothing really all that special. Opponent disconnected, which means maybe he just uh, hates life. Hopefully he is okay, but uh, I'm telling you as a spoiler alert, this may be the feeling that some of your opponents will get once you try out this sort of stuff. Okay, like d4, ed, bishop to c4. That is something very hard, okay? Very difficult to handle. So, yeah, doesn't seem that he's going to be back. Just for those of you that uh, are kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, kind of uh, unexperienced, and maybe this is still unclear, we would have taken the bishop. He would have had to move the king, and I would have just gone back, like somewhere. Okay, don't ask me where, somewhere. If he takes, we just take. If he pushes, uh, that's no problem. We easily take that pawn. You know, that's um, 
not doing anything. It's just a lonely pawn. Uh, so there was something very early on that I wanted to mention. So where was it? Yeah. So it was first of all, it was here. This is how he's supposed to play, and I looked at this position. No matter how he takes, uh, this is great for White with H3 incoming, and he just has issues. You can also check it with a computer if you don't believe me. Uh, <laughs> there you have it. And uh, definitely nothing wrong though with uh, Bishop takes on F7. If you're playing it this way, I think in a practical game, you're gonna do well. I feel like Black's position is pretty difficult to handle anyways. It's just that Combiter is not a huge fan of this in a way that uh, with best play, Black can equalize, but uh, in practical play, they won't equalize. So take it as it is, do your own choices. <laughs> I already showed you both. Uh, or if you watch this game first, I will show you the other one too. Uh, anyways, play bishop to c4. And yeah, here I wanted to mention that, okay, he cannot do anything like knight e5, just because of a very simple continuation. We trade knights, very forcing, very easy to calculate. And then you play a move like rook e1, okay, pinning the knight, threatening to win it with check, which makes uh, black's responses very limited. He has to do something defending the knight. Now, no matter how he defends the knight, he's still going to be pinned. So if he plays queen e7, now he's double pinned. And no matter how he defends the knight, then you got pawn takes on d4. How is this not winning? Did I just fall for the oldest trick in the book? You guys try to pause the video and let me know why this is not winning. So, I haven't seen the solution, right? I just saw the eval bar kind of going to zero. And this gives me a pretty good indicator of uh, what I have just missed. Uh, so, you try to find it, black to play and save it. Because I think you can go bishop takes on d4. And if you play queen takes, you're gonna cry. There's gonna be knight f3, <laughs> forking the whole family, nephews included, and then this is coming. Oh my, that would be, <laughs> that'd be kind of ruining my day. So instead, uh, obviously, uh, what is the obviously better move? F4 would be the other way to punish this, but uh, maybe he gets discovery. Yeah, F4, one of the moves. But apparently it's even better to start before and then CD. And now uh, once this thing happens, apparently it is just a, an important difference that B4 is on the board. <laughs> I don't know. This is pretty insane computery stuff. But uh, yeah, you get that position. First of all, there's no way your opponent finds something like this. And second of all, uh, yeah, do F4 and kind of like no matter what he does, you're going to be winning this piece. You play with an extra piece, okay? I'm telling you, nobody will sack the queen, all right? If they do, they're a moron and you'll win. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it about this game. And uh, let's move on to the following one. All right. Can we get more uh, Scotch Gambit, please? Let's see. Okay, opponent. Kind of cooperating. We see the knight out and... going to play the move d4. Now, what is important, not to recapture, but develop the bishop. So immediately, potentially opening up uh, the door to like a lot of juicy tactics. Hmm. Opponent already giving me a pretty weird vibe with this uh, h6 move. I mean weird in a good way for us because h6 it is clearly a move that is uh, inferior. In this position, he is generally supposed to choose between knight f6 and bishop to c5. He can play bishop to b4 check or d6 as well, but h6 is, it is, it is a bad move because first of all, it's not like knight g5 was a huge threat. Like he generally just has knight e5 among other things to defend f7. So h6, we're just gonna castle. And on the next move, you know, depending whether he plays knight f6, we could be going e5, or if it's something else, we could be considering a move like c3. 
especially on bishop to c5. Okay. We play the move c3. Now, is he gonna take? All right, of course he takes. And, all right. Now, I'm just wondering, guys. Okay, I wanna get uh, a little bit closer to you. And I feel like it's appropriate to ask this question. Have you ever felt like, you know, you're like casually walking around your local park and you all of a sudden get hit in the head with a baseball bat? Because out of nowhere, we're gonna be sacrificing the bishop. And it is very important that you play this move. And then you do queen d5. Regaining the piece. This is by far the most important tactic that you wanna remember if you wanna pick up this opening, the scotch gambit. And it is important, by the way, that uh, you do this instead of the somewhat tempting queen d5. Because that is uh, not gonna achieve much after queen e7. Black is able to defend both, and um, well, <laughs> you're on your own from there. <laughs> King to e8, so we just have to recapture the piece. And uh, yeah, probably just winning uh, back. He's hitting the queen. On cb2, we're happy to take with the bishop and uh, develop. On d6, queen is hit. We have idea also to be annoying. Should we just be very annoying and check? There's like simple move queen c2, which is fine. Do we want to play that queen c3, knight f6? I can go check, create some anxiety for this king, and then go knight takes. Yeah, I'm just gonna be a simple guy. I don't want to be ultra fancy, ultra sophisticated. And what is like super important to understand about these positions is that a lot of people would still be considering moves like, okay, he just played knight f6, he is ready to castle. Well, it is very important that he just moved his king a few moves ago, meaning he is never able to castle again. So. This just gives you a lot of, you know, uh, power to move around. So, first of all, we need to talk about uh, what is the main idea in general to exploit a king that is trapped in the middle. So, pretty much what you need to understand is if the position opens up, that is to your advantage because he is stuck there. You cannot run anywhere, and then your pieces will have a very easy way to start attacking. Now, a move like that is e5. And I'm just kind of glancing over these complications after taking, and then he has queen e7. Blocking the check, and then the position is not uh, entirely clear. So, for that reason, we can, let's say, play something different, like bishop f4. And then we know that knight takes on e4 is a poison pawn because that allows queen takes on g7. So I like bishop f4 just because it's uh, preparing this kind of e5 idea. Also rook e1 not to be neglected. In fact, I'm just going to do rook e1 here because it just makes the threat of e5 incredibly powerful. Now, remember I asked you if you ever got hit uh, in the head by a baseball bat. Imagine how much worse it gets when there's like a full gang of people hitting you in the head with a baseball bat. Like multiple bats. This is what it feels like when we get in e5 and he lost the right to castle. This means he cannot run anywhere. He's completely trapped, caught in the middle of the board. We're just about to pick up the bishop on e6. So, I think... We managed to combine a lot of uh, very important fundamental ideas. But more important, I think these are very common. These are of great practical use. All right. Just forces resignation. I mean, literally uh, winning against somebody that's rated uh, 1000, which is kind of like the equivalent of uh, 1400 in uh, rapid, in like 40 moves. I mean... How crazy is that? Just by, uh, well, getting to this position and then uh, what you need to know, you just have this very little tactic, c3 and then bishop takes on f7. A very nice combo that uh, if I wake you up in the middle of the night at 3am, you should be able to 
uh, immediately say, okay, I play bishop takes on f7, he takes, I play queen to d5 with your eyes closed. And hopefully your girlfriend is not going to think that you're already insane. So, uh, you're insane at chess, but <laughs> not at other things. So we just take and then I'm telling you, open up the position and just by applying very simple concepts, you're setting up uh, yourself for winning countless games with this opening. So with that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. All right, everybody getting a white game, gonna open up with e4 and let's see, are we gonna get some e5? Because we're about to try out something, something pretty interesting at least. So gonna go knight f3, try to get things the pawn. And okay, we see the knight move. You wanna play d4. I think this is the most precise move order by far. And normally I'm expecting pawn takes, okay? Some people may take with a knight, which is whatever. You can just trade knight, take with a queen. You have a better game, just easy play. But after pawn takes, all right, here is where the interesting surprise comes. Because knight takes on d4 is known to be the main move, just leading to the very thematic scotch game. However, we're gonna be starting out with the scotch gambit. So bishop to c4. And then it depends on what our opponent is gonna play. He has bishop to c5 or knight to f6 as the two main moves in the position. So on knight to f6, I recommend uh, we castle. And then it's going to be some uh, interesting uh, stuff. So make sure to stick to that part. But on bishop to c5, this is a very interesting position because it gives white a very powerful and surprising try very early on in the game. And it is incredible how much fear you can save by simply playing this line. And the main reason why it is so effective, and I'm talking about knight g5, is that according to the statistics, like 1% of your opponents will know the best way to deal with it in order to equalize. If not, they're just better without having to do much. So it starts knight g5, okay? And knight h6 is the only move that's playable. But knight e5 also looks, you know, kind of fine defending the square. But one of them is losing and the other one is not. <laughs> you know, that is the small difference to say. And uh, we have the knight. Okay. Already here, we have a very important move because if you mess up the timing, you're not going to be getting such an amazing position. So you really want to remember this, okay? In a lot of these lines, the bishop is a huge target. So the way to exploit it is that we start with knight takes on f7. So we engage into this kind of weird uh, looking early attack because we have a trick here. When I go bishop takes, it's going to take us. Other moves don't really make sense. And now we are currently down a piece, but we have this very strong move. Okay, and it is very important that you don't mess around with throwing useless checks. Like in some similar positions, that may not hurt, but it's also not like a winning difference or anything, even if it's playable. So I would just say whenever you get this, just make sure you cash in the bishop. No need to be messing around. And know black has a choice. They can play queen e7, queen f6, rook e8, rook f8, d6. Uh, d6, I think it's the most common move, and uh, we get to face it. The interesting part about this position is, in order to equalize, they need to play d5. Guess who plays that? Nobody. This is what uh, makes the variation interesting. So, okay. After d6, uh, yeah, I think we have uh, many ways of uh, playing this position. There's a uh, queen to c4 uh, and queen to e2 as a line. There's queen to b5 as a move as well. Uh, yeah. Which one are we gonna gonna go for? I think I'm just gonna go queen to c4 and then queen to e2. 
It's probably blocking with a bishop. But then you're going to notice that, uh, well, all of his dark squares here are going to be kind of vulnerable. And we have this bishop on the board, which he's lacking. So we're going to get castled. In some positions, it could be interesting to play a move like h4. But I don't think uh, here we have enough time because this is kind of like a concrete thing that uh, we usually want to get rid of. And on the next move, we can, I think, complete development. Knight to d2. He plays queen to f6. Very uh, natural move. c3 is also part of the plan in a lot of these structures, but I think we start knight d2. And usually, we're going to end up uh, doing something like f4. If you can get like a great timing with e5, maybe even knight e4 hitting the queen. That is going to be giving white a very nice advantage. And he already makes a very kind of questionable move. I don't get why would you play king f8, but not king g7. Just kind of hiding the king. You don't want to have these two pieces lined up. Like just imagine a scenario where I push, we take, I'm already winning. So he plays d5 instead. Now, against such move, there is e5. There is also f5. Hmm. Very interesting choice. I think we'll start with e5 just because it feels to be the most natural move. But potentially f5 could have been a very uh, juicy move that uh, we could have spent a little bit more time uh, investigating. But already, you know, just by winning this pawn, white is going to be borderline winning. So even though, yes, it would be amazing to get some kind of uh, like a quicker attack, if you will. But yeah, the positional <laughs> way works out just fine. So I think we do this move. Also preparing some queen to h4. Also this and f5. Maybe really crashing. I'm curious if he's going to do queen e4 because that may be... Vulnerable to knight to g5. Plays knight b4, but he just forgets about uh, d4 with tempo. Very, you know, important little detail. And then he just has a complete meltdown. Giving up full queen. I mean... <laughs> he had like a, let's say, reasonable position. Until he didn't. So, just going to do f5. Simply clearing uh, the line for the bishop. Going to take the rook next. Gonna win his bishop as well. Using multiple pins, though. <sighs> that are hopefully gonna take us to victory. Gonna check, gonna pick up the rook. I think at this point, it may be even stronger to go for the mate. Like, uh, queen to f4. Rook to e7. I could have taken my check as well, but this should be just fine. King h6 with mate. This will also mate. So, managed to get this game, but I'm actually curious about one thing. So, we went ahead with takes. Yeah, he, he played actually interesting. I think his moves were pretty much just fine up to this point. Like, um, I think we followed mainline theory. But, why is it to play f4 and then knight f3? And this just looks to be a way trickier position to play as black. Just because um, the king just feels pretty vulnerable in general. Not really much to add. We just play the few moves of theory. Like, one of the really nice things about uh, playing this variation is that you really know what you're paying for. Okay? You're going knight g5. You know, he has one way to play. Otherwise, he's losing. So, he's like really forced to go knight h6 and allow all of these because knight e5 is uh, not doing anything but allowing an inferior version. So, this is even worse for black because they're literally losing the d4 pawn immediately. So, this is already uh, pretty much lost uh, for black according to the computer. And because, yeah, they're just going to be down a pawn there. Uh, I mean, actually, down a pawn? Am I, like, miscalculating? Yeah, they are going to be down a pawn. Sorry, I just got confused there for a bit. 
I was just saying this because their king is also constantly weak because of these dark squares and we have the dark squared bishop on the board. Uh, so then, you know, you enter this, you're going to have this position and you also know that they're not going to play the best equalizing move, which is uh, d5. They're going to do something different that is going to give white a stable edge in the long run. So now because you were a good boy and watched till the end. Here is how you want to access the Leecher study. So pretty much you're just having the normal video and you just need to scroll a little until you see here uh, right under the sub count that you're going to have the first link. So this is going to be the uh, Leecher's link. Promise I'm not going to be hacking your computer or at least not this time. And uh, yeah, just click on it and voila you're gonna be landing on this page from now on you can pretty much uh, click here on the moves in the right on the annotations you can use your uh, keys from the keyboard like the arrows and move around if you want to like use any variation uh, you can click on it directly like the bishop b4 check uh, that we had or the h6 all of them are here and uh, one thing to clarify okay because we had uh, both of these things during the video uh, after bishop to c5 uh, i played both of the lines just to kind of give you an idea of what the options are i mean at the end of the day it's a matter of your taste so you have the option of playing knight g5 uh, forcing this uh, knight f7 little trick and then uh, win back the bishop but as well as uh, playing short castle, that is a completely fine move uh, as well. So uh, you do you. Just wanted to show you the options and uh, yeah, pretty much everything that was mentioned in the video. You can easily access it here with one click. And also, if you're curious to go over the games again, uh, here in the chapters list, uh, you can scroll through them uh, and move the pieces once again. And pretty much uh, get uh, where you wanted. Now, in case you don't care about the Leeches study at all, and you just watch because you're a legend, uh, well, I want to really thank you for your time, and uh, why don't you just check out another uh, Jabava London video that I made by clicking this thing here, I guess, or where it's going to be on the screen. Take care.